CSS has some really powerful tools for creating print-ready documents like books and magazines. But before you can jump into this kinds of complex content, you need to understand the basics of HTML and CSS. In this video, we're going to review the basic concepts behind these web programming languages. So if you already have some experience with web programming, you can go ahead and skip to the next video. HTML is a markup language for describing your content and telling both computers and humans what kinds of content your document contains. You mark up parts of the document to say this is a section heading and this is a plain text paragraph. You do this by wrapping each piece of your content in tags. Here are some examples of tags. Every tag has two pieces an opening tag that you put at the beginning of your content you want to describe, and then a closing tag that goes at the end of the block. Every unique piece of content should be tagged, each large section like a chapter, and even each paragraph, and even each word that you want to italicize. This means that if you're doing it right, you'll have a hierarchy of tagged elements within other tagged elements, creating a kind of tree of parent elements, child elements, and sibling elements. Generally, when you're writing HTML, you want to make it as semantically descriptive as possible. You want every tag and the position of every tag to say as much about each element as possible. So, for example, if you have level 1 headings in your document, you want to make sure to use a heading tag and not just a plain paragraph tag with some extra bold formatting applied. The more of this kind of information you give computers, the better they'll be able to understand your content without needing extra instructions from you. By adding attributes to your tags, you can give even more information about each block of content. You can add things like a title for a chapter, or text to describe an image, or an ID that you can use to refer to that element in other places. The ultimate goal is to create semantically rich HTML that you can then take to the next level with CSS formatting. CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets, gives you a way to add design elements to your HTML content in a completely separate file from that HTML. By combining a CSS file with an HTML content file, you can then turn your flat content into a laid out page. A CSS file consists of a series of rules, and each rule is made up of one or more selectors, properties, and values. The selector determines what kinds of elements you'll be styling. There are a bunch of ways to select elements, and we'll go over those shortly. Every definition should also have one or more properties, which are the things about the element that you want to style. So for example, the borders or the margins or the text color, like the property I'm using here. You then add a value for each property you want to style, which says exactly what that property should look like. There are a few ways to select elements in your document. The element selector selects based on the kind of tag that you've applied to the parts of your document. Unless you tell it otherwise, it will select every single instance of that kind of element. So for example, every single paragraph, like this selector. This tiny line of code would then select all of these paragraph elements that are in this block of HTML. You can refine your target by using positional selectors. Combine these symbols with element tags to select based on the positional relationship of your elements to each other. For example, you can select only every paragraph that directly follows a level 1 heading. Or you can select every paragraph that is anywhere inside a div element, even if it's buried within a bunch of other elements. You can select only direct children of an element, or elements that follow a specific element. So here I'm selecting only paragraphs that directly follow a div element. You can also select all elements that are preceded by a specific element. This is new in CSS3, and in my example here I'm selecting any paragraph that is preceded by a div element no matter how much earlier that div element appears in your document. 
Check out the CSS selectors reference at the W3Schools website for more about using these kinds of selectors. You can get even more specific by selecting based on an attribute value. You can actually use any attribute in your selector by putting the attribute name and value in brackets directly following your element selector. So for example, here we're selecting any heading 1 that has a title attribute with a value of chapter 1. CSS also has two special selectors built in for specific attributes. The ID selector selects based on the value of the ID attribute. I'm going to hop over and show you some live code to demonstrate this. Here's my HTML block, and I'm going to add an ID attribute to my heading with a value of chapter 1, which is just something I made up. I can then use this ID in my CSS, preceded by a hash sign, to select only the elements that use this ID, which in this case is just that one heading. Since IDs are also frequently used to link to other parts of your document, it's best to keep them unique, which means that every ID value should generally be used just once, so there's no confusion. If you want to select more than one element, but you don't want to select every single instance of an element, you can instead use the class selector. Like ID, a class is just a value that you make up and apply to parts of your content. It's become the default way to create CSS style groups and saves you a lot of time over using individual ID selectors. You add class names to elements in the same way that you add an ID. Here, I'm adding a class name of blue text to a couple of my paragraphs. Again, this is just a name that I made up, and I'm going to set it so that the text for these elements is naturally blue. Over in my CSS, I'll specify that I'm targeting a class attribute by putting a dot before my class name. Now I'm just going to set the color to blue. Instead of styling each element individually, I can style them all at once, and I only need to change the style in this one place to update the styles for the entire group. So here, I could change this color to pink instead, and all the paragraphs that have this class applied will get updated accordingly. You may also have a few elements or classes that share some of the same styles. For example, if you want to set one or two standard fonts for your document, you can create a comma-separated list of selectors that should all share the same style. Don't worry though, you don't have to define all the properties for a single element in just one rule. You can have multiple rules for the same selector, and all of those will be applied to your elements. This leads into the concept of the cascade, which is an integral part of CSS. It's even part of the name, Cascading Style Sheets. The cascade is another way to help you write less code and maintain styles for lots of elements with just a few definitions. It can be confusing for the new coder, so we aren't going to dive too deeply into it, but there are a few important things that you should know so you don't get yourself in trouble. First, things that come later can inherit styles from things that come earlier. And second, things that come later can also override the styles of things that come earlier. Let's go back to our live code window to see how this works. Okay, so here we have a document that's divided into a couple of large sections. And then within each section, you have a number of paragraphs. We also have one paragraph that's not contained in any parent sections. In this simple style sheet, we declared a text color of red for our sections, and then a font style of italic for all of our paragraphs. You can see in the rendered result that these child paragraphs have inherited that red declaration from their parent section, and then they added the italic style on top of that. The paragraph that isn't a child of any sections is only italic and not red. Now let's add another style to our style sheet, adding a blue text color to all our paragraphs. Our 
Our new style overrides that earlier section level red declaration, and now all our paragraphs are blue, even the one outside of our sections. There are some pretty intricate guidelines in CSS about what rules take precedence and what can override what other things, so I encourage you to read more about it. This article will give you a pretty good introduction to the concept. In this video, I walked you through just the basic concepts behind using HTML and CSS. In the next video, we'll get into using basic CSS properties to lay out your pages and to format your text.